Okay, I wanted to talk just for a few minutes on a kind of grander, screen, grander scheme approach to accelerated bridge construction. I thought it was a good way to build on the, the excellent work that, that Houston did on this. Uh, if you were paying attention to the timeline, you'll see a lot of this was happening in early October. So uh, there were lots of hallway discussions during short course last year about how to make this happen. And uh, Quincy and his crew really did a tremendous job of uh, making this happen very quickly. And I, I thought in particular this was interesting because of the, the different modular unit that they used. We've been interested in using these modular units for rapid replacement for a long time and uh, haven't had an opportunity to do it. So, uh, you know, sometimes it's good when, when these ideas are, uh, are thrust upon you and you're kind of forced to do something. Um, but, but it went really, really well. And I'm going to talk about a few different uh, methodologies of the modular deck unit and really just kind of tell you where we are uh, as a division and as a department. Uh, many of you I know have attended the accelerated construction workshops. Uh, Bridge Division has been interested in this for a long time. It's really great to have uh, TxDOT administration and contractors interested in these accelerated approaches. Um, I've got 10 minutes here. They give us a whole 20 minutes at the accelerated workshops. I'll put a little plug in for the upcoming Infrastructure Advancement Institute in San Antonio. We've dedicated two entire sessions just to accelerated bridge construction. So uh, if you're available October 30th and 31st, please come down to San Antonio and join us. All right, so I'm going to talk very, very quickly about what we've done, what we're doing, and what we plan to do. What uh, you see there is a, a concept that was used north of Boston, and I thought this was kind of cool. The picture up in the uh, upper right is the conceptual of what they thought might be done, and this is one of those rare cases where, uh, as you can see in the photo on the bottom left, it actually happened just like uh, they thought it would. So um, those match up pretty closely. I'll talk a bit more about that project later. All right, what we've done. Uh, we do a ton of free prefabricated elements. This is something that we've been doing for decades. It works really, really well. It increases quality, increases speed, but isn't truly accelerated construction in terms of, of building things in a matter of days. What you can see in the top right there, deck slab beams. Now, now we're kind of talking accelerated. This is something that we can do uh, in, in rural creek overpasses where if we shut down a bridge, then it may be uh, uh, the only way in and out for a neighborhood, something like that. So this is something you can do in, in as little as six days, uh, typically more like 10, 14 days, but something that can happen very, very quickly. Uh, and then a lot of times when you hear about accelerated bridge construction, I think what a lot of people uh, immediately kind of go to are the, the lateral slide-ins where you br build the bridge off to the side and literally move it in, or the big bridge movers where, again, you build it off to the side, load it up, and, and, and truck it in. These, this modular approach that, that Paul just highlighted uh, with West Dallas Street, I, I think is, is something a, a probably more practical, something that we can uh, hopefully do a bit more often. All right, so let's, let's move a, a bit more into to what we'd like to do. And this is some stuff that we've already done. Uh, the top left photo there, this is full width, full depth panels, and Mike Isaac designed this bridge. Uh, it's been a while now, um, what, probably eight, nine years ago. And this was for successful implementation up in middle of nowhere, West Texas, where it's difficult to get batched concrete available. This is a concept that's been used around the country a lot, and it's something that we're going to be using, I think, more often. So that, that photo in the bottom right there, that's not Texas, but you can see by the, the tin on it, that is not a new photo. Um, this is a concept that's been around for a long time, and we've got one coming up. Um, it's actually already uh, bid, and we're in the process of moving forward. This is a, a project in Waco. We re -go are going with the full width, full depth panels. Uh, bid a couple months ago, three and a half million. You can see there the ABC duration were, uh, is, is 31 working days, where we had estimated the traditional approach as 96 working days. All right, so you already saw lots on this one, the modular units. And I, I think that there are, are great opportunities to expand on the West Dallas Street concept. Um, what made this one really cool was that it could be fabricated completely in a, a, a steel yard. Uh, and it helped, too, that we had multiple weekends. And so it wasn't as critical to get the concrete in place first. So this is uh, a great application where if you've got a, a bit more time, the, the PMDF coming out on it and then being able to come back on the following weekend and do the concrete placement. Uh, really, really worked well. And um, Paul touched on it uh, quite a bit, that, that engaging the contractors and the fabricators, I think this was largely 
uh, a result of the, the steel fabricator working with the Houston Bridge crew and coming up with this concept um, in a joint effort and really just couldn't have gone any better than it did. Okay, so uh, Houston replaced West Dallas Street. Uh, Dallas has decided to replace Houston Road. So, um, <laughs> fair is fair. Um, so, so now we're talking truly accelerated because uh, the, the Houston Bridge, this was the bridge over the interstate. In Dallas, now we're talking about the interstate bridges. And so these are ones where we don't have the opportunity to do multiple weekends. This has to be fast, fast, fast. And the original design concept for this had um, extended phased construction as in uh, like four months per bridge for four bridges. So this would have been a, a long project um, and pretty painful, I think, for the for the traveling public and, and tremendously expensive for the phased approach. So we met with Dallas District. I think everybody agreed that the accelerated um, approach was the way to go. And uh, something interesting about this one, our estimate for the accelerated construction is 7.9 million. The traditional construction estimate is 11.8 million. That's not the norm. Um, typically, you're going to pay more for the accelerated. But I think an important thing to note here the, the phase construction is getting more and more painful in terms of, of time, uh, user cost, and, and actual bottom line cost. Uh, we're finding traffic control to be tremendously expensive. Um, and so I think these accelerated concepts may not be quite as painful as, as we had thought in terms of, of having to pay more. In this case, we if things go as planned, um, we'll actually spend millions of dollars less to do a project that, that takes far less time uh, okay, so to, to highlight something here, so you saw on um, West Dallas Street in Houston, those were fairly narrow steel modular units without the concrete that could be trucked in. Uh, this is a very, very preliminary concept for Dallas, but I know it's hard to see, but these are actually 18 up to 25 foot widths. And so if this is the case, obviously we're not shipping these down the street. So this would be something that's fabricated on site or very close to the site um, that, can, that can be pulled in and, and set in place. Um, another concept, and this is one that's been used around the country, and I think there's an opportunity for us here too, is, is sort of a, a, a mix of those two. So it's got the, the steel superstructure um, elements, the full depth concrete in place, but it's narrow enough that it can be trucked in, so it doesn't have to be fabricated on site. So it's not like you have to settle in on which one of these will work, and I, I'll, I'll talk a bit more, but um, we can overthink this, I think, and I think different contractors will have different approaches. And so um, we, we may think that the best method is to go with the 25 foot width units, but we'll have a contractor come in and say, no, we'd rather do it off site and, and truck it in, which means narrower units. Now, that photo that I showed in the very beginning, uh, the, the, the Fast 14 in Boston is a very well known and very successful. Uh, rapid replacement project and they replaced a series of 14 bridges in 10 weekends and they they were on time every single uh, time and uh, you, you can see in the photo on the top left there they had some serious equipment uh, Nick Nimick and I had the opportunity to go up and check this out and it was super cool the, the I've never seen demolition equipment like what they had up there and allowed them to move very very quickly and uh, something I think that added to the success on this um, is that they, they bid it with 25% concept plans. And so this is another uh, lesson in, in, in not overthinking this. We need to engage contractors and get, get their thoughts very early on. And if we try to go to 100% design, every contractor based on different equipment, uh, different personnel, different expertise will have their own approach. So um, I think this worked really, really well to have the 25% the concept and then let the um, uh, contractor and fabricator figured out from there. Okay, Jamie made me promise to put conceptual only on this. Um, th this, this is more far reaching. These are things kind of in our mind right now that we're not working. Uh, our, our design section is, is a very, very innovative group and um, John Holt was in charge of the section and he really uh, was a driver of innovation and Jamie Ferris is now the, the section director there and she's really continued that. So they do a tremendous job of, of uh, not only implementing these techniques, but really developing them on their own. And they, they've got even internal competitions and um, they, they, uh, innovation uh, committee that really uh, pushes people to come up with these concepts and then figure out a way to implement them. 
Uh, this one here, uh, I think, is a fairly straightforward concept that I, I hope that we can implement fairly soon. It's just a tech skirter with a uh, concrete deck already placed on it. So uh, I think this is something that would be fairly close to the way we build bridges now, uh, but just allow us to do it a whole lot quicker. This is a concept that, that was brought forward just, just a few weeks ago. Uh, this was one that's that, that we've been thinking about for a while. This is uh, kind of more back to the, the full width um, partial depth. So this would be a couple of tech skirters put in place and then you have a full width uh, with, a, uh, with a permanent in stay in place concrete uh, form. And I, I think th th these are the kinds of things we're thinking about. And so if you have any ideas, we would welcome them. Um, Jamie, I think, will continue to push these kinds of concepts. And I'm very optimistic and hopeful that these are going to be able to change the way we do construction. Almost done here. So I, I mentioned that, that a lot of times when we talk about accelerated bridge construction, this is what a lot of people think of. This is the, the bigger grand scheme. Like th this is big time. When you're building a bridge span, putting it on a, a SPMT and, and moving it, um, it, it, it can work well. This isn't the kind of thing that we're going to do often, but it's out there. Um, this is something that worked well for us on the west uh, uh, West 7th Street arches is using the SPMTs to, to move those big suckers, uh, what, about a half mile down the road and, and set them in place. And then you got your slide-ins. Uh, we've done it in San Antonio. Um, other parts of the country have done it quite a bit more. So this is literally just what it sounds like. You build a bridge here, and then you put some Dawn soap down on the sliders, and you shove it over into place. We haven't done a whole lot of it, but it's out, it's out there. Um, I will wrap this up. This is my last slide. Some, some lessons we've learned. Um, engaging the prime contractors and fabricators early and often. Uh, don't try to solve this all um, on our own as, as designers. Uh, remain open to alternate concepts. So, so get conceptual stuff out there, but if a contractor has a different idea or a better idea, uh, be open to that. We have to ensure that the concept is feasible, but, but don't design any more methodology than needed. And boy, this fourth bullet. Um, we have an opportunity to work on a lot of national groups and go to a lot of conferences and we go and see successful implementation out uh, elsewhere. Uh, don't think that just because another state has done it that we can jump right in. Um, it really depends on, on contractor expertise, availability of materials, um, inspection expertise. And th this is a lesson we continue to learn, something that has worked really, really well somewhere else. We can't just jump right in and expect it to work well um, immediately here. I uh, already mentioned the, the need to consider user cost and impact when weighing accelerated versus traditional construction methods. A lot of times the cost is worth it, or with what we're paying for traffic control and phasing now, the accelerated uh, concept can actually be less expensive. That's all I've got. Right at the time, I don't know if we want to, Paul and I can stick around and answer questions afterwards. Anything? Ready to close it out? Okay, I think it's lunchtime.